stay back in the days, you know, gone for days and days. So do you know when your master is going to come back? No. So where must the servant be? He can't be in the back slouching and reading um, Time Magazine, right? Or reading his Facebook post. The servant has to be close to the door. Imagine if the servant is in the back of the house. Would he, would he hear his master knocking? Imagine if you knock and nobody answered. How would you feel? How would you feel? How you feel? Very mad. Mad again. Fire. Somebody said it earlier before. So there was a story that went around. Some of you may have heard it, but for those of you who haven't heard it, there was a minister who visited a, his church member on a regular basis after church. When he got to one of the elders' house, he stood at the door and knocked. As he kept knocking, nobody answered the door. It was a Sunday afternoon, by the way. He took out his business card and wrote in the back, Revelation 3.20. You can turn to Revelation 3.20, but I'll read for you. For those who don't remember, Revelation 3.20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The following Sunday, somebody left the same business card in front of the pastor's office. Right below Revelation 3.20, was Genesis 3.10. You want to turn to Genesis 3.10? And I'll read it for you. You got it? So Genesis 3.10 read, I hear the sound of your, you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So the moral of the story is that be sure to attend Sunday school every week, either Thai and English, so you, can, you know what verse to write to your pastor. So as a faithful servant, you have to be guard, ready to open the door when your master knocks. Next, Jesus teach about something that's counterintuitive. Verse is 37. So this is Luke 12, 37. What does it say? Blessed are those servants whom master, whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Surely I say to you that he will gird himself and have him sit at a, down to eat and come and serve them. Does this happen in real life? You think? When you open up and you're a servant, you open up the door for your master, you think he'll say, sit down, eat. He very pat you in the back and said, thank you. Johnson or Joe Metzger, now go get me something to drink. I'm not saying that Brian do that. But. Or, Master would say, I'm really hungry and thirsty. Please prepare something for me while I recline in the family room waiting for you. That's probably more like it, right? What did Jesus do? He reversed the role. The master will become a servant. The master, they're so eagerly prepared to tell them to open the door, tell them to sit, you know, sit at the table, and he has girded himself with his clothing and prepared to serve them. So that's not the normal, not something we won't normally do, right? And this is, this is not something that you would expect from any Roman master. Very far from it. Jesus surprised the disciple from many times of his teaching. Jesus is present to help them. Jesus is a leader and a demanding one. And he's not aloof. He is a servant leader. from whom all of us learn to serve and take a servant mentality. If you look at John 13, four to seven, I will sum it up. He is a humble servant who washes the dirty 
31. Feet of whom? His disciple. In Mark 10, 45, he is a son of man who does not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is an assurance that given by Christ. And if we are a faithful servant, he will reward us handsomely. Verse 38, he emphasized on being ready. If he comes in second watch, or in third, and find them awake, blessed are those servants. Again, this is a reassurance that Christ gave that even if they have to stay up in the wee hour of the night, until the, until the morning. So the third watch is probably sometime 3 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock. You'll be rewarded for their, they will be rewarded for their readiness. If you want to know the detail of the night watch, you can refer to Judges 7. Chapter 7 will give you that detail. So therefore you must be ready regardless of the time of the night. And Jesus warned us in verses 39, but know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thieves was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken in. So back in the day, you know what kind of house, how they construct their house? Plywood, maybe, concrete? Well, it's mostly bricks and mortar. So the thief priority is to get in, will make the hole, and get in and get out without disturbing the owner of the house. He may walk to the bedroom and put the blanket on the owner, say, stay warm, don't wake up. The only way to catch a thief is you know, trying to get to your house, is to stay away and anticipate any sound at night. So basically, you don't go to sleep. In the same way, Jesus will come unanticipated, unexpected. The only way you can be ready for his second coming is to stay awake spiritually. Stay alert, stay awake. In verses 40, he ends with, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at the hour you do not expect it. John tells us in Revelation 16, 15 that behold, I, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stay awake and keep his clothes with him so that he may not be naked and be shameful exposed. Shamefully exposed, sorry. So be ready. And remember the story I, I talked, I told you to remember at the beginning of the sermon? Janitor. Can, I, can you somewhat repeat it for me? Janitor was Oh, you remember the money part. Thank you for the sermon on tithing, Pastor Peter. Somebody remember. So the janitor didn't do his job, right? And we, as a church member, as an owner of the church, were just extremely angry, disappointed. How about we reverse the role? Can we reverse the role? Instead of being the rightful owner of this church, we are all janitor. Who are we? Janitor. And Christ is the owner of the church. And actually, he is, and not us. Can you imagine how he would feel? Share with me how Christ would feel when he come and he find his church a mess. Disappointed? What else? Fired? What else? Sad. Sad. You think Christ is sad when he looked at the praise community church? What do you think? 
You think he's happy? Happy. Happy? Very optimist. That's good. Do you have room in your life that you don't want to open for Christ to enter? And are we ready to receive him? That's the question. Is Christ in every room of your life? You remember the um, sermon by um, the Charles Munger, right? My heart, Christ, home. But that's good news. Because Christ loves us. And here's what we can do to start a restoration process. And this is my step, and you may use it as well. If I were that janitor, you know what I would do? First, I would throw away the trash, right? So we have a church full of trash. I will throw away the trash. I'll start cleaning up. I'll get rid of all the trash that's laying it down around. You know, the trash that I may have forgotten to clean up yesterday, but it's not too late to start removing some trash. And this I call repent. Amen. 